Hello and welcome in this video tutorial and in this video tutorial we will be discussing about advanced topics in tuple. So if you aren't familiar with what tuple is, so you can go to the data monk channel and check out the complete numpy playlist which I have created in which I have explained all the important concepts like dictionaries and tuples. Okay, so but I will also brief you in this video that what tuple is. So tuple is a collection of python objects much like a list. The sequence of values stored in a tuple can be of any type and they are indexed by integers. So values of a tuple are syntactically separated by commas although it's not necessary it is more common to define a tuple by closing the sequence of values in parentheses. The size of a tuple means the amount of memory in bytes taken by a tuple object. So in this video we will learn about different ways in which we can get the size of the tuple. So the very first way in which we are which we are going to learn is this one. So what are we basically doing over here? What are we basically doing over here? We are using the function get size of. So this is a function which we are using get size of function and it belongs to the Python's sys module. That is why we are importing sys. Sys stands for system and this get size of it belongs to the python sys module or the system module and that is why we will have to if you want to use this function we will have to import this module okay so that is why we have written import sys and these are my sample tuple values so tuple 1 is this one it has three elements tuple 2 is this one tuple 3 is this one and if i execute this if i execute this i'll get the output Size of tuple 1 is 88 bytes. Size of tuple 2 is 88 bytes again. And size of tuple 3 is 72 bytes. Okay. So the sys.getSizeOf of function includes the marginal space usage, which includes the garbage collection overhead for the object, meaning it returns the total space occupied by object in addition to the garbage collection overhead for the spaces being used okay now we can also perform other operations in a dictionary and the very most common and important operation over here is joining tuples if the initial element is same okay joining tuple if the initial element is same so sometimes while working with python tuples we can have a problem in which we need to perform concatenation of records from similarity of initial element. So this problem can have applications in data domains such as data science. Now let's discuss certain ways. The most important prominent way in which we can join tuples is this one. Okay. So we can use the looping system. We can use the loop system to join the tuples. How do we do that? This is a brute way in which this task can be done in this we create a new tuple if we find no occurrence of similar tuple values previously slicing is used to add the rest of elements to created tuple okay so first first we will initialize the list okay so this is a list and the name is test underscore list now this list has certain elements over here so first we will print the original list okay so to print the original list we will write the original list is we'll put a space over here and then we will write str so str is basically used for converting this test underscore list this entire entire thing this entire thing into the string data type and then it will print it okay so we are doing that now we will join tuples if the initial values are same so for that we have created a blank or a list with no element okay blank list and we have named the name we have named it res okay so we'll use a for loop now so for sub in test list if res and res minus 1 0 is equal to sub 0 res minus 1 minus 1 it is basically minus 1 means that the index is indexing starts from the back or from the right hand side this side and minus 1 means the last element so res minus 1 dot extend 
sub 1 else res dot append l for l in sub okay now res is equal to list map tuple comma res now it will print the results so for printing the results print is equal to the extracted elements we have put a space over here and then we are again converting this res value which we have got from here into string data type and then we are printing it so in this way we can easily use a loop we can easily use a loop to join tuples if they have the similar initial element this is a for loop which is used to check that whether the initial elements are similar or not okay so let us execute this okay so the original list is this and the extracted elements are this so yes this program is working properly now we'll meet again in the next video tutorial and in the next video tutorial we'll discuss some more important concepts